Greetings everyone, my name is Flair Blitz here and welcome back to the Mystery Files of Detective Inaba number 2. I believe we are nearing the end of the game, but obviously there are three endings to this game and I hope that this is going to be one or two of the endings that we can get right now. If not, then there are going to be some pre-requirements such as Mr. Snowman that we need to deal with in the past so that we can get to set other endings if they are there. Okay, are you ready to put, put together the case? Yes, I can. Ayamura, would you mind gathering everyone to the dining room? Uh, Mr. Naba, does that mean? Yes, I'm ready to put together the case. It's time. Thank you everyone for coming. So, were you able to piece together the entire case, Mr. Inaba? Yes, ma'am. Then please let us hear your deduction. Of course, ma'am. Let us look back at what's happened. Allow me to first explain Mr. Natsumi's case. Our second victim was Natsumi Sasaki. He was killed in his own room and his body was discovered wearing a raincoat inside out. The time of death was around 2.10 a.m. The killer has stabbed Mr. Natsumi five times in the chest and obviously did that. The carpet was soaked with a large amount of blood and the blood had even splattered all the way to the bookshelf. As for the murder weapon, it was a knife taken from the kitchen. To speak on the state of the room further, there is no chance an outside third party could have conducted the killing. To speak plainly, the killer is one of us. That can't be. Mr. Inaba, if I may interject, the killer would likely have blood splashed on them during the act. But the only traces of blood were found was on the raincoat the victim was wearing as well as on the gloves that were stuffed into the raincoat pocket. And there are also there's also the towel we found in Mr. Karita's room. If I recall those gloves belonged to Mr. Karita, as well as the raincoat, those were Mr. Karita's too. Karita, did you no, Mr. Kini, it was admit before we jump to conclusions and point fingers at each other, wait until the end of my deductions, if you'd please. As Ayamura stated, the killer would have well, would have the victim's blood on them. However, we only found blood on those items we've mentioned earlier. Inspector Harima, Ayamura, and myself searched highly sorry, such high and low to find any trace we could have left behind of their blood clothing. However, we all came up empty. This leads me to think the killer used a certain trick to prevent blood from catching on them. What do you mean? The killer used something at the very site of the crime to prevent blood splatter from getting on them. It was the raincoat. Uh, over the item the killer used to prevent bloodying their clothes and press confirm. Indeed, the killer used the raincoat the victim was wearing to prevent the blood from getting on them. What? Then you're saying that before Mr. Natsumi was wearing a raincoat, the killer wore it first? You're exactly right. This is how Mr. Natsumi ended up wearing the raincoat inside out. This was the reason why only the outside of the raincoat was covered in blood, but not the inside. The killer also used this to prevent the victim's blood from spilling even more than it did and, of course, served to protect themselves from blood splatters. That makes sense, but why did the killer put the raincoat on Mr. Natsumi in the first place? Simple, it was in order to not make a mess of the room. The room? I'm confused here. Mr. Natsumi's room was absolutely covered in blood. I can't fathom why it was so important for the killer to put a raincoat on Mr. Natsumi after the murder. Recall the scene of the crime, Doctor. There was certainly a lot of blood on the books, on the bookshelf, and on the carpet in Mr. Natsumi's room. However, it was absent from the floor. There wasn't a drop of blood to be seen. Does that strike you as unnatural? So the killer whipped all of the blood off the floor? Then, to make sure it didn't get dirty again, dressed up the victim in the raincoat afterwards. Now, did that make more sense for everyone? Not exactly, Nina. The killer still left the books and carpet covered in blood, so why would they only care about the blood on the floor? Let's think outside the box here. 
When you get blood on something, what type of materials can't be easily cleaned? Um, that would be fabrics made out of clothes and linen or linen and papers. And oh, I get it now. They could have d didn't clean up the books and the carpet because they couldn't once get blood. Couldn't once. They couldn't once blood to get some of them. Okay, good job, Ayamura. But isn't that more strange? Why would a killer only bother clean up the floor when there are other blood splatters that would incriminate them anyways? Because it was most vital. Because it was most vital for a killer wipe up the blood to begin with. It would be incriminating evidence that would tie the killer to the crime without fail. So they had to, so they had to ever, so they had to do everything in their power to wipe it up. Okay, evidence that would tie them to the crime. I don't understand the significance at all. How does the blood in my old brother's room end up exposing the killer, Mr. Investigator? Not quite. It wasn't the blood in your older brother's room that the killer cleaned up. I'm sorry, but what are you blabbering about? All I'm hearing is a bunch of roundabout nonsense. You make less and less sense with every word you speak, Detective. Then let me explain it in full detail. The entire trick behind this case is... Hmm... Let's see here... The killer... That doesn't make sense. The killer switched to the crime scene. Hmm... We could have switched to crime scene. You mean that Mr. Natsumi's room is not the original crime scene? That is correct. Then where was the murder originally committed at? In the killer's room. In their own room? The killer called Mr. Natsumi over to their own room and then killed him there. However, they were well aware that if anyone were to discover the victim's body in their room, they would become the top suspect. That's why the killer switched the crime scene to Mr. Natsumi's room so it would seem like the murder occurred there instead. Then the killer wiped up all the blood that was in their own room? Precisely, Doctor. And any materials that had blood on it couldn't be wiped up, were swapped with the same materials found in the victim's room. I see now. So the floor of Natsumi's room didn't have blood wiped from it because it never had blood on it to begin with. That's correct. Who is it, Mr. Naba? Who is the killer? The person who killed Nat Mr. Natsumi in their own room is... Hmm? Let's see now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Hmm, on the third question, answer with the seventh option. Shun, you were the one who killed Mr. Natsumi in your own quarters. Huh? It, Mr. Natsumi's killer? No, it can't be. Um, just a moment. Mr. In, he has an alibi. He was with me at the time of the murder. Remind me again where the two of you met. Uh, we, we met in the front of his room. Yeah, exactly as I said, the crime was being done in the killer's room during that time. Then, while I was speaking to him in his room, Mr. Natsumi was... Yes, Mr. Natsumi was on the floor, bleeding to death. Do you have any evidence that points to me being the killer, sir? I do. Let's hear it. The evidence that directly points to Mr. Well, the butler being Mr. Natsumi's killer is... Um... Select the bookshelf. It was around this area. The blood-soaked books on Mr. Natsumi's bookshelf are the decisive piece of evidence that point to Mr. Well, the butler being his killer. Why the books? Yes, as I said earlier, the butler had switched the crime scene. Therefore, anything that had blood on it that couldn't be wiped off was swiped between his room and Mr. Natsumi's room. In short, even things that were his own personal property needed to be swapped. Uh, of course, then all those books that had blood stuck to them were originally from the butler's room, right? Indeed, Ayamura. If you can recall, some of the titles of his books were The Fundamentals of Cooking, Worry-Free Living, and Healthy Habits, Healthy Life. 
Yes, but it's certainly mine, sir. Hold on. Those books are ones I gift to every member of my household, domestic helpers in included. Mother's correct, I have those books too. I even gave those books to Natsumi, despite the fact he was never with the patience to read, bless his soul. They should still be sitting on this shelf. Yes, and everyone's books were accounted for. Even the butler's books were still there after the murder. The problem lies is in the arrangement. The books in both his and Mr. Natsumi's rooms were changed around a bit. Okay, their books were rearranged. So what? People's bookshelves get rearranged all the time. Unless you're telling us you're so perfect that yours never changes. You're not wrong, miss. Ordinarily, people do move around the books on their bookshelves a bit in day-to-day -day life. If that's the case, then how does this implicate me as the killer, sir? It's just one thing. I found something peculiar in Mr. Natsumi's bookshelf that shouldn't be there in the first place. Huh? It was a diary titled Kyo's Tips to Housekeeping. When you were swiping the contents between the two rooms, you made an error and overlooked this diary amidst the belongings. This diary is yours, correct? Shun? I will admit this diary belongs to me, sir. However, I have absolutely no motive of killing Mr. Natsumi. So it wasn't all for Miss Sakura's sake. Huh? Me? Are you going to tell me I'm wrong? You truly are a great detective, sir. But what do you mean? I demand an exclamation. Hmm. I agree. I believe a detailed explanation is in order. It all started on the 9th of the 10th, the first day that Ayamura, Dr. Harima, and I came to this residence. It was that evening Miss Shimatsu witnessed Mr. Well, the butler entering Mr. Natsumi's room. Yes, that's right. It was then that Mr. Natsumi wanted to discuss a certain matter with him. And what would that be? Mr. Natsumi was trying to find any unhanded method possible to receive the inheritance for himself, Mr. Shortly into the conversation, he proposed I kill Miss. I made a counter proposal to send a death threat to her instead. Then, are you saying the death threat I received was? Yes, it was all my doing, Miss. I'm truly sorry to put you through such distress. And that is all I have to say on my detailed explanation. Butler? I can only form conjecture from here, but I must ask, was that truly the last time you spoke with Mr. Natsumi? Did it really end with you delivering a death threat to Miss Sakura? It's just as you're thinking, Mr. Naba. Mr. Natsumi was not satisfied with simply sending a death threat. His mind was set. He could only be satisfied once Miss Sakura was killed in cold blood. Man, I know some lame-ass death threat wouldn't work. What's the point if Sakura wouldn't give up the family inheritance? We're going back to plan A. We're going to kill her ASAP. But mister, to go so far as to murder someone nevertheless your younger sister is. Chill out, I've got this all under control. As long as you've got money, you can make any of- Oh, for goodness sakes. You are the biggest, biggest a-hole that there is out there, Natsumi. The biggest and butler if you snitch on me I'll kill you too got it are you serious sir look at my face I'm dead serious I'm, th if I'm thinking about building my own company where I do things my way and for that I need money a lot of money taking my old man's fuel for money makes me want to puke but I need to make my dream come true. I gotta do it for my special lady. I have to do it for her sake. I need to be able to take care of her. I see, so that's how it is. What? Huh? You got something to say? Mr. Natsumi. What? Really? And that is what happened on our second meeting. Natsumi, he... That's when I knew in my heart that I had no choice. But to kill Mr. Natsumi. Why? Tell me why. It's because the butler too had a special someone he needed to protect. A childhood friend. So that at least solves one lingering question on my mind. The question being, why did Mr. Natsumi not run away upon seeing a strange figure dressed in a raincoat and gloves wielding a kitchen knife indoors? No matter how long you live under the same roof, if you were to suddenly see an acquaintance dressed like that, that would be alarms going off in your head. But now it all comes together on the surface. It appeared you were complacent in his crime. 
but you were waiting for a moment to strike and kill him. Precisely as you said, sir. I told Mr. Natsumi that his plan was ready to action. Mm hmm. Therefore, I requested he came to my court, come by my quarters later that night to lay out the plans for me one last time. Whoa, I can't believe you're really doing this. Yes, I plan to lay her sleep. And what about the cop? Don't worry, I'll have it taken care of, sir. Okay, then what's with the get up? It's so no blood splatters will get on me. Interesting, that's some real smart thinking, butler. It's nothing, sir. What's up? Don't tell me you're getting cold feet already. This will be the last time I will ask you this, Mr. Natsumi. Do you still intend to go through with this? Yes, I can't stop now. Not when I'm this close. Is that so? What did you... Uh, I'm sorry to hear that, sir. And a moment later, Sasamoto came by. I quickly took off a raincoat and gloves and went to talk to her in the hallway. After sending Miss Sasamoto off, you began your work of switching the crime scene. Yes, sir, I also realized at the time I could use Sasamoto stopping by my court as an alibi for the early morning of the 12th. You then put Mr. Natsumi's body into the raincoat turned inside out and you transported him with the carpet so that it wouldn't dirty the halls. After that, any materials that had blood on them that could be washed off were cleaned, and anything that couldn't was swiped between your rooms. Exactly as you said, sir, I made every effort to ensure everything was properly swapped, however, the diary completely slipped my notice. With that, we conclude the case of Mr. Natsumi's murder. Uh, Mr. Inaba, I do have one question. What's that? Yesterday, the whole incident with a teacup, was that the butler as well? No, that wasn't me, ma'am. Dumb. Eh, yeah, then who did it? Natsumi, who else? He was the one who wanted to kill... Really? No, the criminal wasn't Mr. Natsumi in this case. Huh? The person who tempted with Mr. Kira's teacup was... Akini? Akini Sakaki, you were the one who tempted with Miss Sakura's teacup. What? Why would you accuse me of all people? Hold on a minute. Would someone mind filling me in on what you were currently talking about here? I'm just as lost as you are. It sounds like someone, a monster, tried to tamper with Sakura's teacup. This is the first I've heard of it. You are correct. The majority of you are not aware of this incident. I want everyone to recall last night's dinner. The butler told everyone that a dish was broken, so all the tableware needed to be replaced. The truth of the matter was that someone, a monster, attempted to poison Miss Sakura's teacup with methanol alcohol, but they dropped the teacup by mistake. The only ones who knew of this were myself, Ayamura, the doctor, the butler, and Miss Sasamoto. Ergo, all Amira said earlier was the whole incident with a teacup, then how did you know about the nature of the crime and then, oh sorry, that the target was Miss Sakura? Mind, me, mind telling me how you gained this knowledge, Miss Sakini? That's because I... I remember during dinner you instantly knew it was a teacup that was broken and even dropped Miss Sakura's name in the conversation. Hmm, not like it matter. Sakura would just end up breaking another teacup again either way. Ah, flashback. So... If you put names out there forward, then people will know that, um, well, taking in this sort of small notice here, you'll gather that, well, if you mention names and a certain item, then it will be brought up. When it comes to broken dishes, anyone would normally think of the housekeeper, Miss Asamoto, however, your first instant, instinct was Miss Sakura. Was it because you knew beforehand that Miss Sakura's teacup was the dish that was broken? Well, miss? Yeah, it was me. Akini, why? It's because I am the only one who could... Okay. I want my inheritance just as badly as anyone else here. In order to fulfill Dad's expectations, I first need to prove my worth to him as a future here. So I studied and studied and studied. Even after getting accepted into a great university, I still studied from dusk to dawn and worked my blank off. But Dad never acknowledged me in the slightest. That's why I tried my damnedest to be even better than him. All I wanted was to hear him for once say, I never expected such great things from you, daughter, from you, my daughter. 
you have surpassed even me. But now that can never happen. Before I could show him the fruits of my labor, he died. So I, Akini, I wanted the inheritance, sure. But when that detective told that one of us did that, I kept thinking it over in my head about how Sakura might have murdered him just to secure his inheritance all for herself. You thought it would be best if your sister had a taste of her own medicine, didn't you? Yeah, but once I poured the contents of a vial of methanol alcohol into my sister's teacup, I got really scared. Just thinking about something, doing something so drastic, my hands were trembling non-stop. I couldn't hold on to the teacup and I dropped it and then I ran away. I don't have the courage to kill someone. Killing someone isn't courageous. Maybe you're right. It really isn't. You can remove that smirky look of your face, Akini. Then the incident with the teacup had nothing to do with Miss Nat Mr. Natsumi's case. The two cases are not related at all. Mr. Inaba, I want to thank you for finally uncovering who murdered my Natsumi. But what about my beloved husband? Who murdered him? Of course, madam. Now allow me to solve the mystery surrounding Mr. Sakaki's murder. First, I will reveal what the doctor and I both have gathered about our first victim, Rindu. From the beginning to what we know now. Mr. Sakaki's cause of death was strangulation with a rope. The time of death was estimated to be about 11pm on the 9th, three days ago. His body was found hanging from the ceiling. It would initially appear to anyone who discovered his body that Mr. Sakaki did that. However, when I examined his body, I noticed that the bruising on Mr. Sakaki's neck was inconsistent with ones I've seen with... Yeah. Indeed, the only conclusion left was that Mr. Sakaki did not do that, but was murdered. This was all confirmed later when we received his autopsy report. Additionally, the autopsy found that Mr. Sakaki had traces of sleeping medication in the system, so the killer rendered him unconscious and then strangled him. Wouldn't strangling him for victim and staging the crime scene take considerable upper body strength? I'm not so sure if a woman or a child would be capable of that. Shouldn't that, narrow, shouldn't that narrow down our suspect pool? That is the reason why the killer used sleeping pills to begin with. Then it would be possible for anyone to strangle an adult male without assistance. Now, as for the staging the crime scene and hanging the victim's body, have you considered the possibility the killer might be an accomplice working with them? And a compass? Remember the will we found in Mr. Sakaki's room? I'm almost certain it was not written by the descendant. See, I knew it. That will was forged. That's not true. I know my husband's handwriting. Of course you'd think so, Mrs. Sakaki. After all, the personnel has not only been writing in place of your husband for nearly three years, but they also have perfectly replicated his handwriting. One of those? What do you mean? Allow me to explain. Wasn't your husband involved in a car accident with a drunk driver three years ago? Yes, that is correct. The accident regrettably left Mr. Sakaki with a radial nerve palsy, which is a condition that leaves the aff affected, un afflicted unable to use their hands. I never knew. Since he was incapable of using his hands, there can be no question that Mr. Sakaki had used, and I, I still can't pronounce that word, to become his substitute writer for the past three years. I see. So Dad was eating exclusively in his room due to the fact he couldn't use his hands. It all makes sense now. Father would never allow any of us to see such disgrace. Then who was the agent writing on Mr. Sakaki's behalf? The person who was Mr. Sakaki's personnel is... Let's see. Send a question... Hmm. The waiter? The butler? You are correct. I am the personnel who has been writing on Mr. Rindo's behalf over the last three years. But how did you know, sir? I knew from the very moment you told me yourself that you were responsible for Mr. Sakaki's meals during breakfast yesterday. Come to think of it, it was mentioned earlier that Mr. Sakaki always ate in his own room. Were his meals portions this size as well? No, sir. I had to prepare a meal made specifically for Master Rindo. When Sasamoto and I would bring his meals, the master would tell me that he'd like he'd like done throughout the day as well as instruct me on tasks he'd like accomplished. After the master was finished with his meal, I'd return to his room to bring back the dishes and wash them. 
and put the chocolate in the process. <laughs> After two of you delivered his meals, Miss Sasamoto would promptly leave his room. However, you remained behind with Mr. Sakaki. As we have heard from Mr. Tsubaki earlier, Mr. Sakaki would never allow anyone in his family to see him in a disgraceful state. Undoubtedly, this would apply to the domestic helpers as well, so Mr. Sakaki wouldn't have his butler linger any longer than he had to. So there must be a reason why he had to stay instead of leaving with Miss Sasamoto. And there can only be one reason. Butler knew of his condition and acted as his personnel. So the butler knew all about Mr. Sakaki's condition and became his hands out of pure necessity? Does that sound about right, Butler? Yes, madam, right after the car said the master ordered me to write on his behalf as his... I've never seen that word before, so don't critique me or judge me in any sort of way about... Oh, why can't you pass that word, Flair? I just can't, okay? But he wasn't happy with just that alone. He wants the whole world to not know. Therefore, he instructed me on how to replicate his penmanship so no one would be the wiser. And that brings us to how you drafted the holographic will in his name so flawlessly that no one would doubt its valid validity. Then why did the butler choose Sakura to be the beneficiary? Childhood friend. It was the same motive as when he killed your older brother. Um... The butler gave her the inheritance in order to protect her. He was protecting me? In truth, the master had zero inclination to give anyone in the Sakaki family his inheritance. This also extended to his domestic helpers. His sole consideration was to pass on his inheritance to a worthy successor outside the family. It can't be. I asked the master many times over to reconsider his decision, but he wouldn't listen to me. Naturally, he feared what would happen to Miss Sakura if she were to not receive the inheritance. Miss Sakura has lived an extremely sheltered life as the esteemed daughter of a wealthy family. So you were worried about what would happen to her if she were to be kicked out of her house and forced to live a normal life at this point. It's plainly obvious what would happen. She would end up falling on tough times or be taken advantage by the very world she was protected from. So in order to ensure that she would never have to go through such hardship, the butler made sure she will become the heir of the inheritance. You are correct, sir. Shun? That's the entire reason why you murdered him? That is correct. He, the butler was responsible for the murders of Mr. Natsumi and Mr. Kasakaki. What? I confess what he says is the truth. Why? I thought you only killed for the sake of my sister, so why'd you kill our father? I'm sorry, Miss Sakura. Sakura. Your life is much more important than my own. All I do is for you, my sincerest wish is for you to live unhappily. But I do have to make one thing clear. The real reason behind me murdering Master Rindo is not for Miss Sakura's sake in the end. What? Your true reason for getting his revenge, isn't it? Revenge? Mr. Inaba, how on earth are you aware of that? Butler, are you actually the product of the, of the affair Mr. Sakaki had with the former housekeeper, Kyo Aoba? It can't be. And that would mean that Diary Kyo's tips to housekeeping was written by your mother. Then the K in K Aoba stands for Kyo. Yes, it's true. I am the son of a housekeeper who worked here 30 years ago. My real name is Shun Ilba. It was 24 years ago my mother had sent a letter, letter about Master Rindo's affair to the Sakaki family a few days before. I still remember that dreadful night like if it was yesterday. The smell of smoke had woken me up. My house was on fire and no matter where I, t where I turned, I was met with a sea of flames. In a daze, I grabbed my little sister's hand and had managed to barely escape with my life from the flames. However, my mother was too late and had died to the fire. I later learned that it was Master Render who had set my house on fire. He wanted to erase any evidence of his infidelity by killing us off. Master Rindo never had to worry about the law. He used his wealth and power to cover his involvement. So a distinct, distant relative of my mother gained custody of my sister and I. We were only five years old at the time. We adopted their surname, Ishihara. My little sister went on to live a more simple life. 
She always insisted that the fire that day was nothing but an accident. But not I. I swore to exact the revenge that my mother had sought and went on to become a butler within the Sakaki household. I see now. I didn't know butler. At long last I got revenge from my mother. I have no regrets. Shun, you are hereby under arrest for the murders of Rindo Sakaki and Natsumi Sakaki. Um, Mr. Sasamoto, Mr. Kurita, I leave the house in your care. Mister? Of course. You can trust us. Let's go. Shun, I... Mr. Kura, no matter what, please be happy. It's all I could ask for. Goodbye. At least he's not trying to escape. After that, the butler was placed in isolation within his own quarters. The next day, the police were able to arrive with the cascation of a snow... Within the cascation of a snowstorm, the butler was led away by Inspector Hiruma into police custody, and thus the curtains of his case quietly fell. Thank you so much, truly, Mr. Inaba. Don't mention it, man. All I did was, was bring things to their natural conclusion. May I make another request in the future if I have any needs for your skills? Any time you like, madam. We'll eagerly await your request. You can rely on my assistance as well. Thank you for all your help. Take care of yourselves. Thanks. I guess. Well, shut up, you. You still got some questioning to do. You're always free to stop on by. Next time I'll have a banquet of flowers prepared for you all. Hasta la vista. <laughs> see you in Arbor. Likewise, see you all. Normal end. Lost respect. You am I lost respect? We definitely did all that good. A goody 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 deduction skills detective rank A. I did that without the walk. I'm, jo I'm joking. I did do that with walkthrough. A wonderful show of deduc deductive reasoning, Mister Inaba. Yeah, I've seen better, honey. You didn't have to be that mean. Well then, good for us. Bad for the people that were locked up. So let us see the other two endings, as there were not really any divergences within that case scenario. Ah, wow, look at all this snow. No kidding, I didn't notice it accumulated so much. It's cold. Oh, is that Aoi's friend, Mr. Snowman, over there? <laughs> Aw, look at him, he's so cute. She sure has a talent for making snowmen, doesn't she? Hey, I said it's cold. Let's hurry and get inside. Jeez, Mr. Inaba, a little chilly air won't kill you. Huh? Hey, guys, look up there. Over there. In the second floor's window. Is, is that who I think it is? No, look at that. It is. That's Miss Sasamoto and Mr. Tapaski. Not people who I'd expect to see together. I wonder what they're talking about. It must be something nice. Just look at that smile on Miss Sasamoto's face. They seem awfully intimate. No way, could it be they're going out? But Mrs. Tomato is a common housekeeper and Mr. Sparky is the son of to a wealthy family. Oh, maybe this is one of the uh, many secret magic rendezvous to hide their forbidden relationship from the family. <laughs> what kind of a sappy trape is going on in that head of yours? Sounds like it's going straight out, out of a love drama. Call it a woman's intuition, Mr. Inaba. Sure, whatever you say. Okay, guys, that's enough staring and gawking. We don't want to be caught, so let's go. Let's get on back inside. Yeah, of course. Sorry, I got way too caught up in this interesting new development. It's so cold, I could go for some hot coffee. I'll make you. I'll make some for you later, Mister Naba. More like now. It's a snowman that he'll meet. Instead of a traditional bucket hat, it is wearing a hard hat that reads Nakaya Construction. Why is a snowman wearing a hard hat on his head when they traditionally should be wearing a bucket? Maybe Aoi couldn't find a bucket nearby. That is a question. That is a good point. Maybe there wasn't a bucket nearby, so therefore we had to make alternative arrangements. Or when I say we, I mean Aoi had to make alternative arrangements. 
Um, would you mind telling us again about your whereabouts and activities during the night of the ninth when your employee, Mr. Sasakaki, died? But I already told you everything, sir. Yes, you did, but I'd like you to explain it to me once more to refresh my memory. I want to know what really happened on that night three days ago. Are you still going to keep telling me you were doing absolutely nothing in particular? I, I swear, sir. I absolutely swear that nothing in particular happened, sir. You know, I almost forgot to ask you. How was that little tristy with Mr. Tespaki yesterday afternoon? You both looked quite cosy together. What? When did you? Oh, was I imagining? I could have sworn I saw you both at a bar. You, t you two looked awfully close, like a pair of lovebirds. No, 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 this, this is not what you think we... Okay, why am I bringing this matter up with you? I should report my findings to Mrs. Sakaki straight away. But please, you don't have to do that, sir. If a madam finds out about this, I would be out of a job and home, and I can't have that happen. If you tell me the truth of what happened three days ago, then I won't say a word to anyone. Fine, I'll confess everything. Mr. Inaba, I can't believe you would sink so low. You have some nerve pulling that stunt you did. Silence! Uh, before I start, what I'm about to say here needs to strictly stay between, between us three, of course. Uh, that night on the night, I am. Um, I was. I was in Mr. Tosparky's bedroom where actually, you know, um, then you two really are dating. Please keep your voice down. Hey, yay, I was right. My intuition was right all along. <laughs> in your face, Mr. Naba. Shh, Ayamura. I'm sorry, Mr. Samoto. Would you please continue? Right, a um, month afterwards, I went upstairs to the third floor to use the shower facilities. Sh -sh 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 shower so you and Mr. Sabaki were no that's not what I intended for it to sound like J -j just that the housekeepers are not allowed to use shower facilities after midnight can we get back to the conversation yes sir I'm sorry for getting sidetracked sir so I was with Master Tespaki in his bedroom at around 10 o'clock p.m. then I went to take a shower on the third floor by 11 o'clock p.m. And it was around that time where I ran into the butler. Oh, so you also saw the butler? Yes, ma'am. Apparently he caught me sneaking out of Mr. Tespaki's bedroom. So the butler followed me to the fourth floor where he then proceeded to lecture me. That went on for nearly half an hour. Wow, 30 whole minutes? Talk about hardcore. The butler takes his job pretty seriously. After the lecturing, I finally was able to take my shower and then I snuck back into Master Mr. Tespaki's room by 12 o'clock midnight. After that, I went back to my own bedroom at 1 o'clock a.m. Then the next morning, the butler summoned me. I honestly thought he was going to continue his lecture from yesterday at the time. So what is it that he talked with you about? Uh, the butler said to tell no one of meeting with him last night. That's an odd request. Yes, I didn't understand it either, madam. However, he said in return he won't tell anyone that Mr. Tespaki and I are a couple. However, even though I kept my end of the bargain a secret, you two figured it out anyway. Even though I tried so hard to not let anyone know. No, I... It was by pure luck that we happened to stumble across your trist. Uh, please, please, please don't say a word of this, madam. You have my word, Mrs. Sasamato. I'll keep this information of your relationship with Mr. Tosbaki and meeting with the butler in confidence. I don't know what to say, but thank you very much, sir. No, it is I who should be thanking you. You told us a very valuable piece of information. Um, it, it was really nothing, sir. Yeah, I totally called it. Come on, Mr. Inaba, please tell me again about how that was nothing but sappy tripe. <laughs> You're enjoying this a bit too much. I'm not gloating. Nope, not me. Hmm, regardless, we gained some very valuable information from her testimony. You're right. At that time during Mr. Sakaki's murder, Miss Sam Mrs. S Miss Sasamoto ran into the butler, so that means they both have an alibi? In a manner of speaking, it's his alibi too. 
Now I can understand why Sasamoto and him won't come forward with the fact they were together. But that doesn't explain the butler's motives for wanting to conceal their alibis. In doing so, he's concealing his own alibi as well. Maybe there's some kind of intruding circumstances. Yes, that could be the case indeed. Okay, no, this is where you are mistaken, Mr. Kini. Mr. Mr. Sakaki's killer is not the butler. What? You're wrong, Mr. Naba. I did do that. I killed Master Window. It was me. What's going on here? Is telling the truth, Mr. No, butler. It wasn't you. No, you're the one who's wrong here, sir. I am admitting to it. I am the one who killed Master Window. I have ample motive. Shun? My true identity is Shun. Over. I'm actually the son of a housekeeper who worked here 30 years ago. What, so the former housekeeper who had an affair with Mr. Sakaki and gave birth to twins, you weren't one of them? That's impossible. Mr. Well, Butler is indeed the twin son of Miss K. Aoba. The diary goes tips to house writing was written by your mother, wasn't it? Yes, sir. My mother's name is Kyo Aoba. And also as well, I made an error earlier where I thought that... You would have to thoroughly inspect the bookshelf. Um, there's actually another step I need to do down the line in the game in order to get to a better ending. Because I've been through this once just to confirm that if what I did was true in accordance to the walkthrough provided by the translation team. But when I went through this process, I got a bad ending. And therefore, it just stands to me that... The bookshelf was not it, there's something else in the game that you need to do in order to get to the true ending. It was 24 years ago, my mother had sent a letter about Master Rindo's affair to the Sasaki family a few days before. I still remember that dreadful night like if it was yesterday. The smell of smoke had woken me up, my house was on fire, and no matter where I turned, I was met with a sea of flames. In a daze, I grabbed my little sister's hand and had managed to barely escape with my life from the flames. However. My mother was too late and had died to the fire. I later learned that it was Master Windu who had set my house on fire. He wants to raise any evidence. Master Windu never had to worry about the law. He used his wealth and power to cover his involvement. Disability, not going to custody of his sister and I. We were only five years old at the time. Dropped the surname. The sister went on to a more simple life. Uh, but you wanted to swear revenge. But Mr. Well, Butler, you and I are blood relatives. That would make you my new half, my half brother. No way, that's right. The blood of the Sasuke family runs in me too. But at last, I got my revenge. I'm sorry, but you didn't get any sort of revenge. Am I not missing to the very crime I committed? What more evidence do you need, sir? Yeah, what's your proof? Don't you detectives prefer for the criminals to turn themselves in? Butler, Mr. Sasamoto told me everything. You had an alibi for the time of Mr. Sakaki's murder. I'm terribly sorry, Butler. It just slipped out of my mouth, so I had to tell the, the detective about our meeting on the 9th. <sighs> then who in the world actually did the deed? Who killed our father? The person who killed Mr. Sakaki is... The boy. Azusa, you were the one who killed your father, Mr. Sakaki. What? You're lying. The big brother you killed father? Hold on a moment, please. I can understand that he would have enough strength to strangle his unconscious father to death with a rope, that is much certain. However, there's absolutely no way that he would have the strength to stage a body with a victim, well, a hanging with a victim's body. That would be correct if he was acting alone, but he had the help of an accomplice, an adult who was willing to hang his body. Isn't that right, butler? You're on. I did everything on my own. Please leave your master out of this. We already established that he had an alibi for the time of Mr. Sakaki's murder, so there's no way that you could be the killer. Give it up, butler. I refuse. Let's hear it, then. How did you kill Mr. Sakaki despite having an alibi? Well, on that night, I took the sleep, I took the sleep medication and mixed it with his drink before he went to bed. 
when he was unconscious, was, okay, and then had him from the ceiling to make it look like suicide. Okay, okay and how did you get the sleep medication? It was something I personally bought a couple of days prior. Hold on a sec. What you said doesn't make doesn't match with the evidence. When we were conducting our investigation, we discovered that the pills used in Mr. Sakaki's murder were the same ones that Mr. Samoto owned. Then those sleeping pills belonged to Sasamoto? Correct. It's more than a little odd that you failed to mention that you used her sleeping pills if you really were the killer. Miss Sasamoto didn't want anyone to worry about her suffering from insomnia, therefore she didn't make it publicly known that she was taking sleeping pills. However, there was one person who was aware about Miss Sasamoto's condition, and that was... You. Your master? It's fine... Butler, Mr. Investigator, already knows everything. You really did it? You killed your father? Yes, I did, Mum. Wait a minute here. Butler, why are you protecting him? I thought you only wanted to protect Sakura. Don't you get it, Akini? Butler is an extremely compassionate person. That's just the way he is. Huh? On that day, slipped some of Miss Asimoto's sleeping pills into Dad's meals. Then I went into his room while he was asleep and that with a robe I'd prepared. After that, I must have spaced out or something. I don't remember how long I was in a stupor, but eventually the butler came into Dad's room. Uh, Mr. Rindo, Master Rindo, it's me. Excuse me, Master Rindo. I'm coming in. What the? Hey, butler, you caught me. Your master, what happened here? Yeah, a lot happened, I guess you could say. I killed him. Why would you do such a thing? Well, I guess re reason really doesn't matter. What matters is what you're going to do about it. Butler, are you going to turn me over to the police? That's not... Hey, Butler, I've been watching you lately. I know the real reason why you're here. Say, you like my sister, Sakura, don't you? I also know that my dad has no intention to hand his inheritance over to anyone. Think about it. Can my sister survive out there on her own? You have to admit that Sakura is the most sheltered one out of all of us, wouldn't you say? That's not. How about you forge a will in my dad's handwriting that leaves everything to my sister? What do you say about that, butler? Huh? We know that Sakura is the only one who wouldn't use the inheritance for selfish means. She'd always think about what's best for her family. Not to mention it'd make you happy too, wouldn't it, butler? While we're at it, we can alter the scene to make it look like Dad, yep, by that. Isn't that a much better reality? Yeah, I'm master. What? You won't do it? I'll do it. However, the day will come when it's found out that Master Rindo did not do that. And when that happens... The butler was merely following my orders with the thing he did. Why would he go so far, so far to help you? I hated the master with every fibre of my being. My life's existence was completely dedicated to carrying out revenge against him. However, upon meeting with Sakura and everyone else within the Sakaki family, I felt something change deep inside of me. Even though the thought of revenge gave me purpose, I went into that man's house and found everyone was kind and gentle. I found other reasons for living. If that was the case, then why did you kill my Natsume? Everyone in the Sakaki family holds a special place in my heart, but the person most dear to me more than anyone else is Miss Sakura. Hmm? I can never forgive you. Still, the most vexing thing is that I can understand your feelings. As much as I hate to admit it, it pains me. Tell me why. Why did you do it? Why did you murder your father, my beloved? Because he was human filth. What else do you do with garbage? Ugh. Azusus, you did this because your father was abusing you, wasn't he? The entire reason you avoid anyone you knew, or seeing you undress is due to, a fit, to, due to your fear that they might see your bruises and injuries, isn't it? How? Aoi told us. Big brother, I see. So Aoi told you. Why? Why do you tell us this, Azusa? I made a deal with Dad. As long as I stay silent about his true nature, no one else had to put up with his abuse, his punishments. So all I had to do was endure it. That's why I was the only one who had to get hurt by him. 
Uh, Azusa's? Azusa's, why did you make it sound like it was a bad thing? That violent side of his was only because he loves us so much, or did you forget? Eh? Mother? Mum? It's time you wake up and accept the truth. What Dad was doing, that wasn't love. No, you are the one who needs to wake up. When he hits you, he's just shown... That kind of love he has for his family. When it bubbles over, it can't be contained and it must be shown. So why would anyone want to take that away? You call that love? You must be insane! How dare you! No, it can't be. Then the bruises on Mother's body were... Yeah, I wasn't that only punching back. Oh dear, this game... Well, most games always talk about parents and I just think that, well... If anyone's hearing me around them, like in the neighbourhood, like next door or that door over there, I don't know what they're probably thinking. Ah, uh, the human trash. Why'd you let things go this far? You should have told us we're your family, you know. You didn't have to shoulder the burden on your own. Shut up, shut up, shut up. What if you shut up? Everyone was too busy to notice. No one cared about that. No one cared that AO2 was suffering at the hands of him. AO2, what are you saying? AoE, like me and Mum, also was abused by him. However, not one of you seemed to notice. Oh my god, this is unbelievable. In the end, everyone was only out to help themselves. Mum was already beyond, broken beyond repair. No one came to our rescue. No one asked if we were okay. Bit by bit, I reached the limit of what I could endure. How could I? I... It's all his fault. It's all his fault. We'd never be the same because of him. So that Blank had to. It's only natural for trash like him to be taken out. Hmm. What's going on here? Hmm. I'm sorry, but you're making a big mistake. You are surrounded by your family who loves you very much. Who very much loves you, so you shouldn't talk to them that way. Why? How dare you, Nina? I'm making a mistake. I suffered so much for this. I sacrificed everything. I even took out that filth. I did this all for them. I put everyone before myself, and yet, yet, you dare say that I am mistaken. Watch out, Nina. Yeah. Stabbed. By the same what kitchen knife, probably. Could be Mr. Inaba. No. Mr. Inaba! Mr. Inaba! <sighs> Please stop this at once, ma young master. Let me go. Let me go. I'm not mistaken. I am not. Calm yourself. What am I... What am I supposed to do? Hmm. Dr. Hurima, save him. Please save Mr. Inaba. Already on it. <sighs> what kind of face is that, Ayamora? Mr. Inaba, please save your breath. Dr. Harima is going to save you. <laughs> Pink cheek. A true assailant. But a true assistant will always smile. Until the very end, Nina. Mr. Inaba, you can't go. Please don't leave me all alone. Mr. Inaba? Mr. Inaba? Mr. Inaba! Dr. Harima's treatment wasn't enough in the end, and Mr. Inaba never opened his eyes after that. Mr. Robert Butler and Azusha were then both taken into the police custody by Inspector Harima. The only word spoken to the doctor and I as we left to the residence was a single sorry said by Miss Sakura. When we finally left the mansion, it had stopped snowing. With that, the curtain was brought to a close on this case. A mystery fire I will never forget for the rest of my life. Yikes. Your coffee is mid ready, Mr. In... He used to be there. <laughs> it's just like you drink... It's just like you to drink such sugary sweet coffee, Mr. Inaba. A phone call. 
In about Detective Blue, we have his detective apprentice Nina Ayamoa speaking. Is this a case request? Bad end. Things will never be the same. D for dead. Whoopsie daisy. Did you not do enough, do well enough in your investigation, Mr. Inaba? It'd be best if you tried again, but make a more thorough investigation this time, sir. Why are you lot judging me? Say hello to me when I'm... When you're down under as well as me. Right. So there's a few more things I believe we need to do before a true ending can occur. So the... According to Memories of Fear, there is a little bit of an additional walkthrough bit here which falls under the brackets of true end slash back end, but sorry, bad end. And it goes throughout and it would lead to, you can find this obviously um, if you just Look through Memories of Fear's website and then go to the game and then obviously you'll be able to find a link called Walkthrough which has like a little sheet of paper thing on top of it. You can find a walkthrough there and it says to acquire the true ending you must obtain the butler's closet and find the necklace. So I believe, I believe we can do that any time in the midday so the so his room is here ah here it is it's a necklace excellent hmm it looks like this fell out of one of the suit jackets it looks like a necklace with a cherry blossom motive on the pendant it's really lovely i didn't expect the butler to be into this kind of stuff excuse me what are you two doing Oh, it's the butler. We found this necklace lying around. Is it yours? Yes, it is, actually. I've been looking everywhere for it. I'm so relieved that you found it. Is this necklace important to you? Yes, it's quite precious to me, madam. A little while after I started working here, Miss Sakura had made this necklace for me. A gift from Miss Sakura? Wow, she m really poured her heart into making this. You two must be super close. No, it's nothing like that, madam. Oh, uh, then I must be mistaken. My sincerest apologies, sir, madam, but I must be returning to work. Oh, right, here you go. You can have your necklace back, Mr. Ishihara. Thank you. Now, if you excuse me, then... I don't know about you, but I totally sense there is more going on behind the scenes here. Could it be a forbidden love between a butler and his mistress? I'm sorry, I think I can't take you anywhere. <laughs> You're incorrigible. Yep, whatever that means. Yep, we found his necklace. So, the only difference between the bad end and the true end of his game is the necklace. If you find it, you get the best ending. If you don't find it, then obviously you would have had the ending that we just witnessed a few minutes ago. So, without further ado, we should be able to get to an ending where we do not encounter that death scene anymore. Hopefully. Hmm. Somebody else this time. So, the difference this time being that um, rather than Ayamura coming over to help Azusa's, it was his sister. Azusa's, you are mistaken. You are not alone in all of this. We will always be here with you. So you shouldn't say stuff like that. Why? Why would you say that, Sakura? I am not mistaken. I endured his abuse for so long. Now take out that filth. I did this all for you. I killed him for all of you. Yeah, and yet... You dare speak to me like that? <laughs> Sakura, watch out. Ah! Shun. Sh Shun! That's enough, Azuzas. Let me go. Let me go. I'm not mistaken. I am not. Calm yourself. Please take care of Mr... Oh, take, please take care of her partner. <laughs> Already on it. Just the same as last time. 
Sean, you can't. You can't die. I, I don't. I don't need any inheritance. As long as you're by my side, I'll be okay. That's all I can ask for. As long as you're with me. Miss Sakura. Then why? You can't die on me. I need you, Sean. I. I did it for everyone. Yet yeah, they. Big brother Azuzas! Azuri? I'm so sorry. It's all, it's all my fault. I knew you were suffering, but I couldn't save you like you had saved me. I I couldn't say... No, it wasn't your fault, Aoi. So please, you shouldn't apologize. No. Azuzas. Azuzas, you really are a dummy. Azuzas, I have no words. I'm completely in the wrong. I was far too preoccupied to see what was important. No, I don't know what I was thinking. I'm sorry. Because of me, the butler is... Sean! Don't worry. I'm going to be fine. The necklace! It protected him. Ah! Isn't this... Isn't this the necklace that I gave you? Yes, because of your necklace, I escaped death by just a hair. Nevertheless, you're still wounded. I've done what I can. You should get some rest in your room. Then let's hurry. This way, sir. You can breathe easy. His life isn't at risk. Oh, thank goodness. I'm so happy, Sean. You saved my life once again. Huh? Don't worry about it. Thank you for everything, Miss Sakura. After that, the butler continued to be monitored by the doctor. His life had been spared. Yes. Azuzas was then placed in isolation within his own room. The next day, both the police and the ambulance were able to arrive with a cessation of a with a cessation of a snowstorm. Azuzas was led away by Inspector Harima into police custody, and Mr. Ishihara was taken away in an ambulance. And then a must the curtain to this tragedy case finally fell. Well. It looks like it's time for us to leave. We are very grateful for what you've done, Detective. Please come by the Inaba Detective Brewery at any time. Open doors are always. Oh, doors always open. Sorry. If I have, if I ever have any need of a detective, I'll just do that. We'll be happy to help if you ever need our assistance. Hee <laughs> hee. Feels wonderful for all of us to finally be together like this. It's going to be a long road to recover for us to rebuild our lives. But we'll make it through because we have each other now. We want to make sure that Azusa and Sean will feel completely at home when we return. Mr. Inaba, please don't forget what you said earlier. We're going to build a snowman together with Azusa's. Don't worry, we will. It's a promise. Indeed, it's a promise, Aoi. Now, if you excuse us, we'll be leaving. See you then. No. Nah. Thank you, Mr. Great Investigator. Yay. And that definitely puts the curtain closing onto this mysterious case. And this probably goes through the different feuds that a family has had and other characters. Before the events of this game actually transpired. <laughs> God, no. <laughs> Suffering abuse. Poor doctor. <laughs> Those two. Obviously one of them can't talk. Because they're, well, you know. That was their discussion. Ah, <laughs> what's that all about? Playing cards? Nah. <laughs> the was the inspector there? Oh yeah, the inspector was there because she was her bodyguard. Huh? <laughs> uh, that's what you get for examining laundry. You should get someone else to do it. Preferably someone of the same gender. <laughs> Nicholas.
They just seem like a very unlikely pair, those two. But their humour just works so well. <laughs> Nah. It's for snowman. That promise was fulfilled then. Thank you for playing. I can't read writing. <laughs> My gosh, it's black writing on a black chalk lined background. He's back. Oh, okay. This is a flashback. Hey, butler, hold out your hand. Mm, you mean like this, Miss Sakura? Ta-da! This is her necklace. Not just any necklace. I crafted it myself. It also has a cherry blossom pendant on it, so it shares the same flower name as I. And I believe that today marks the first year anniversary of you working here, doesn't it? Think of this as uh, a congratulatory... Congratulatory gift from me to you. But isn't this a woman's necklace? <laughs> oh no, I didn't rec realize it until now. How could I make such a silly mistake? I totally wasn't aware when I made this. I'm terribly sorry. Then, does this mean that you don't like it? No, don't worry about it. Thank you so much. I'll treasure this necklace. Always. You mean it? Yes, I mean it. <laughs> You're most welcome, Sean. Sean? Whoops. That came out so naturally. I do like your name, but I should stop, right? No, it's fine by me, Su Miss Sakura. You may call me whatever you like. But now we just do it. Don't just do that, Shan. Drew end. Smiling for you. Nah. That little flashback's quite nice, actually. Of how the necklace came to be within the hands of the butler. Detective skills. What? But I did everything right. Oh, for goodness sakes. I did everything right there. I didn't make any mistakes in the game, but yet it, did, it gave me that. Oh, okay. Also, you will get this if you did not examine the bottom left row of the books of the victims. That was the error that I made earlier when I thought that that was a pre-requirement for the true ending. I'll be right back when I get to that case, guys. So just hang on tight. It will just be a few moments for you. For me, it will be several minutes. Good. We did it again, the true ending. I managed to inspect it this time, and yes, S for special because I didn't do it the first time around. Go me and reading walkthroughs. <laughs> I do genuinely. Oh, case closed, a perfect job. Why, thank you, Mr. Inaba. I think you did pretty well too. Hey. So, I tried to go through this entire game without consulting the walkthrough, but I like the puzzle in itself in the second episode, I believe. There was just no way of being able to go through this game without consulting the walkthrough. And I believe it is not the translator's fault for putting out clues, which are, in other words, quite vague. I believe it's something to do with the lines that if the developer didn't implement in certain features or certain clues in the game that would either make it have so that has more sense so let me reword that sentence there if they put clues in the game so that it would make sense for people to acknowledge and then piece together then it would be entirely possible to go through the game without consulting the walkthrough and those choices the way it's like you chose this person then that person than this person again that's also quite a tough scenario if if you haven't really studied or been in the field of criminal investigations to be able to pick out the small details in life 
So that's why I think that these kind of games are either yes or no when it comes to giving up right clues so that people will be able to get it off the bat. Otherwise, it's just not possible at all to complete without a walkthrough. You can't a gallery, this place is only unlocked by reaching Detective Rank S. Here you can see the various illustrations and animations used in this game. You can also read about character concepts and references. They are written by that personnel, because I can't pronounce their name, the game's designer, and them, the scenario writer. It's highly recommended to make a save specifically here inside a gallery so you can always reload it and appreciate it anytime you want. However, if you're saying if you are saying to yourself, I honestly don't care about this kind of stuff, you can always return back to the touch screen by going through the door to your left. Thank you and enjoy your time. Who am I in this case? An enigmatic individual. Ah. This gallery was originally a map made for the main game, but unfortunately we could never find a use for it. So it got remodeled into what you see here. Thanks. Our protagonist, whose very name can strike fear in the heart of any criminal. Sojo and his assistant Nina were the first characters created at the time we were developing the first game of the series of mystery files of Detective Inaba number one. We wanted the detective character to be the type of person who would be very exhausting for the average individual to be around. He would always wear a very unapproachable expression on his face. Therefore, I selfishly demanded for his assistant to be the complete opposite. She must be sweet, pure, and kind. So we created a female high schooler who was pretty much the embodiment of an angel, so to speak. She is, actually. Their, their, thus, their designs turned out to be a difficult, to be difficult for our group to handle. Thinking back on it, I feel bad for putting them through it. Thankfully, they his character designer ended up making him good looking. Also, when I started writing the scenario for the first game, Sojo already came across as a crabby person and not. And that meant poor Nina became an easy target for him. Lol. Thankfully, further along, Sojo did learn to mellow out. Not to mention, Sojo became a sort of punching bag for the members of Suka Bar, so our treatment of him also influenced how he was handled in the game, but we only did it out do it out of love, you know. The interactions between Sojo and Nina were the most fun to write for. <coughs> Excuse me. Everything became a lot more lively whenever these two had a conversation together. Personally, out of the entire cast, Sojo is my main favourite. On that note, myself and everyone in Sojo hopes you all like Tevin Inaba. Ah, thank you. I certainly do appreciate the, uh, the developer, developer comments in games, which is very nice. Our heroine, the angel like assistant Nina, though I do have to ask why a well mannered girl like her is hanging around with a sour pus like Sergio. Lol. Nina has a bit of a sharp tongue and will sometimes blurt out loud, blurt aloud whatever is on her mind. Due to this, no one can ever say she is anything but true to herself. She just she's just that kind of gal. Sojo and Nina both have a bit of history together as they lived in the same neighborhood. So when young preteen Nina's parents had Sojo watch over her, she saw it as a fate bringing them together. She decided that she would continue to work with Sojo through thick and thin. I'd even go as far to say that if Nina wasn't there, there's a good chance that Sojo would just shrivel up and die right there on the spot. With the mystery files of Detective Inaba number one having so many male characters and an overwhelming sense of blakeness, it was nice to have someone bright, cheerful and expressive like Nina around. Her character designer, Bon Hay Lee, Perfectly matched her personality when she designed her. I wish nothing but the best for Nina. Okay. Ah, this is Rindo. Sorry for being harsh here. But this guy is absolutely one of the biggest scumbags out here. As you piece together his murder, you'll discover bit by bit that, despite him being a victim, Rindo's ill deeds are the cause of all his family's suffering, even going so far as to abuse his own wife and kids. 
though Rendo had a loveless marriage and only married Nancy Ziku for personal gain. I had to ask Ven why he would even bother having six kids with her. She is the mother of a Sasuke family Jury McClyne. Max is revealed that she has an unhealthy romantic obsession with her husband, Rendo. Despite the fact that her marriage was purely out of convenience, she truly loved Rindo from the bottom of her heart. Even though she suffered physical abuse at the hands of her husband, she convinced herself that she could endure in the name of love. She is a woman who will put herself through hell and high water for this man. As a side note, Shiro Gama, the person in charge of her design, had trouble drawing a character suffering from Stockholm Syndrome. So we had a lot of difficulty drawing her portraits, and for that, I really am thankful for all they're done. Okay. Uh, Natsumi is the eldest son of a Sasuke family who has a devil may care attitude. However, he was always not always that way. He was a diligent student who took life very seriously up until the time he left the house. The insane amount of pressure from his father proved to be too much for Natsumi and he felt he had no choice but to run from it all. To do so, he enrolled into a university of his own accord and currently cut ties with his family. That was where he met his future girlfriend and eventually fiance, Yuki. Natsumi treasured Yuki greatly and fought the world of her. Alas, his dedication to the relationship was what set him on the destructive path leading to his death. Though he never laid claim to that which was his, I would have to say that meeting Yuki was probably the happiest thing that ever happened in his life. And he was also a complete a-hole. Natsumi's fiance, Natsumi and Yuki first met at their university where she knew full well that her future fiance was born into money. That's why Yuki tried to get closer to him from the very beginning. Even Natsumi was really aware of her intentions of only wanting to marry him for his money. After really, basically, if we don't know how relationships work, it's the one way to go about it if we just want the other person for their money. That's just completely toxic. For me, I will personally pursue a person to call my partner, my wife, my best friend, in how they are like as a person, their personality, their their kindness, their common sense logic anyways. <laughs> a thing that nuts me to the point where she no longer cared if he was wealthy or not. Uh, okay, so it was money at first and then it was actually for personality. I can't imagine what she must have felt when she arrived to imagine as a stranger to the family and was then exposed to their pains and secrets. I personally can't imagine it was easy for her. I wonder if after all this you could be able to find love again. Marry someone outside of a Sakaki family and build herself a happy future. Probably. Azusa is the youngest son of a Sakaki family. You can say that he is the main antagonist of the mystery files in TV number 2. We basically wanted him to be clever and too smart for his own good, practically the kid version of Psycho. Also, Azusa says it's the first time the character can control a character other than Psycho. Yes, definitely. There was also a bit of a spoiler, or as you could say foreshadowing perhaps, in the beginning of the game. You can see a scene of Zeusa having a nightmare about being a... Okay, by his father Rindo. He was carrying... He was crying out from the bottom of his heart for anyone to save him. That was when he decided that it was finally time for him to call for help. That was why Azusa unconsciously felt that Sogo was his last hope. Therefore he gave Sogo plenty of hints throughout the game. It was his only way to get the detective to bring an end to the tragedy. Out of all the characters in this game, Azusa was the one who made the most character growth. Yeah, I agree that he was actually. He was always this naive kind of boy, as it were, but he also held a secret desire, or not desire, a secret ability to be able to be outrageous, release an outburst, as it were. Despite all the hardship Azusa went through, Aoi, his family members, and the domestic helpers are eagerly awaiting for the day when he can come back home. It will be a slow process and it will take a lot of time and patience, but I am positive that things will only look brighter for Azusa. Uh, 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 Ad endem. 
The following information will contain spoilers for normal ending. Please press hold and hold this S key to skip this information. Don't want to be spoiled. I've already been through the normal ending. Another thing worth noting is that throughout the course of the game, as this always referred to Sogo as Mr. Investigator or Mr. Inaba, but in all reality, as this is him plainly by his surname, Inaba. It happens that Sogo, Nina, and Sierra leave the mansion after Sogo incorrectly deduces that Shin is Rindo's murder. It was at that moment that Sogo was no longer a respected detective in Azusa's eyes. This is also the reason why the normal ending is called Lost Respect. Okay, so that unravels that mystery as to how, and I repeat, how that ending got its name. She is the wife of the Doctor. Kyoko is what you would call the mum friend within her group of peers. She is always there whenever you need her. Kyoko was originally created and designed by this personnel. Her first appearance was in a short fan-made comic, fan-made comic of the Mystery Files of Detective Inaba number one, where she was known by her maiden name, Kyoko. Don't know how to pronounce that surname. Since she was well received, I made sure to incorporate Kyoko into the sequel. Also, I just want to say that I feel like her and Sierra will make a good married couple. <laughs> I never imagined I would be including Seiya in the sequel. When developing the Mystery Files to the number one, he was solidly created out of a con conversation our group had. We need to have a doctor, or how else can anyone tell what the victim's cause of death is? So from there, the doctor named Seiya was birthed out of necessity. Funnily enough, he un unintentionally rose to the top of the suspect list in the game due to that aura he gave out. Him, his character designer, gave him a sort of a heroic determination. A complete change from his cowardly nature in the first game. As a result, he now has more of a backbone, except when dealing with his wife. Especially after the events that unfolded in the first game, it was only fair that Seiya had become a lot stronger. He met his wife, Kyoko, when he was working for the police. And even though he has constantly been henpecked by her, he probably enjoys it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Deep down in that pit is some secret desire. Again, he's the middle daughter of the Kaki family. When number two was being developed at one stage of planning, Akini didn't have a major role in the story and she was going to be one of her victims to die. I wish she was. During the time when Sakura's teacup was poisoned, Shun was going to suddenly come across Akini's corpse stuffed inside the freezer. The freezer would hinder Siri's ability to accurately place her time of death, giving Sogo no choice but to rack his brain and discover the circumstances behind her death on his own. However, trying to fit this into the current plot, as well as convincing the player of how the killer did it, proved to be too challenging. Oh, so it's not like that the story and the clues given were challenging enough, Seiko Bar. I'm not saying that you did a bad job of delivering the game, but I think that the puzzles just need some clues in them. So we decided that Akini should be one of the survivors instead, and it was easy for me to incorporate her more into the story. Personally, she's my favourite member of the Sikhoi family, she just seems the most human to me, and like the type of character that I want to root for. Aside her horrible personality towards the detective and the assistants, at all times, she was just like, oh, what do you want? Can't you see that I'm busy here? I've got my own life to fulfill, so you can just leave me alone. Thank you very much. Like, can't you see I'm busy here? I don't care if you want to give me an alibi or if I have to give you an alibi. I've got too much on my own plate to deal with. Thank you very much. Uh, the following information may contain sports for game. Here is an interesting tad bit of for those curious. Of a single day after here, the teacups shatter. Try to open the door to the storage room located the south of the kitchen. Sokka would notice that the door was locked. What happened was that when Akini dropped Sakura's teacup as she was trying to poison it, she panicked and immediately locked herself inside the storage room. It's something that I thought would kind of add to the game, but now I wonder if anyone actually bothered to notice this small detail. Lol. Well, I didn't actually. I did not notice that bit of detail there. Ah, the gardener. His gardener employed by the Sakuki family is known for his freckles and baby face. He does have a baby face. 
He is a pretty pathetic guy, Ah, Almost like how Sio was in the first game. Despite being completely unrelated to the events that happened, he somehow got himself caught up in the family's mess. Talk about bad luck. Yeah. Aside from being a gardener, there really isn't much more to this guy. Which is a shame because I really want to find more reasons to have him in the story. Sean is the butler employed by the Sakaki family, and we all know what that means, but Butler did it. Initially, I wrote him to be a far meaner character who treated anyone who wasn't a Sakura with utter disregard. Then, as I wrote further into the game, I made him more cons consensuous of the Sakaki family. Shun's character eventually started to transform into a more of a gentle soul. Still, it may have made things interesting if he was a little more calm and distant. A bit late to change all of that now. Oh well. We could have 2.5. The mean side of Shun. <laughs> Shun tried to pin his crimes on the gardener since he couldn't do that to any of the Sakaki family members, and obviously he couldn't blame Sego and the guests who had only recently arrived to the mansion. And since the um, housekeeper was already was already his alibi, Shun had no other choice but to incriminate the gardener as the killer. Even though Shun appears to be a perfectionist and cover his tracks well, there were still many pieces that didn't fit into the complete puzzle, and that was how Sogo was able to see right through his facade. But I personally feel that was all for naught because Shun was already ready to give up and turn himself over to the police at that point. Once Sakura gifted him that necklace, Shun started to develop feelings for her and his mind steadily drifted away from revenge. His heart is far too full of kindness and love. That's both his greatest assist and his greatest liability, don't you think? Unfortunately, Shun knows that ultimately he and Sakura are related by blood as they are half-siblings. So these two are set for an inevitable heartbreak. Quite. Sakura is the eldest daughter of the Sakura family, also not to sound rude here, but she's the type of child one would expect from being born into money. I thought she was the kindest daughter. No, actually, you know what? She was one of the kindest daughters in the family. Her beauty is a crime, her thick headedness is a crime, her blissful ignorance is a crime, her. well, you get the picture. I personally feel that Sakura is easily someone that anyone can find fault with. Since Sakura is such a sincere person, at some points when writing the game, it was difficult for me to get a good grasp of her speech and mannerisms. Whether she is in love with Shun or not is something that even she doesn't know the answer to. Though short of that, it's also a sure thing that Sakura doesn't, sorry, does consider Shun to be a special person in her heart. Nah. That's nice to hear. Ah, oh, the middle son of the family. And that's about it. He really doesn't have much going for him. I got so absorbed in writing um, their romantic relationship that I totally forgot to give her own boyfriend any sort of character development. Sorry about that, second son of the family. Initially, we planned to have Sogo theorize that Rendo was having an affair with the housekeeper, but Tespaki would object because he was one dating her. Or something to that effect, you get the idea. It would add some nice drama, but by the time I got around to it, we were already finished at, and, and the idea never came to fruition. Jeez, sorry again about that, Tespaki. I swear I'm not trying to ignore you. Working on something else here. I swear I'm not ignoring you. Working on something else here. Gotta write up their romantic poet. It's gotta be lovely, it's gotta capture the moment. It's going to take your imagination away, somewhere far away, so that you may be never be able to return again. God, this romantic plot is going to be so good, isn't it, now? It's going to drift all of your minds away. I swear I'm not ignoring you. I like this piece here together. It's going to be so glamorous. Anyways, enough, enough being off track here, I think. While developing the character, we had a hard time making sure that people were able to differentiate between him and the novelist. Okay, from the first game, due to their similarities. I was trying to picture who that character was. I imagine it was another male. White hair. Unless it's similarities, that is, and personality. The 
You're right. The owner of the abandoned abandoned mansion. So we had it where that guy was dismissive towards everyone around him. He only really bared his fangs as his older brother, Natsumi. Isn't he the lucky one? Growing up, Tsubaki looked up to Natsumi and yearned for his approval. Maybe that's why they both share the exact same hair colour, though we totally did that unintentionally. We're still writing up this romantic relationship, by the way, you know. <laughs> unintentionally. Rindu saw a lot of potential in Tsubaki and trusted him with many decisions regarding the family business, even if he wasn't considering him as the heir. Nevertheless, Tsubaki was still under the assumption that Rindu never trusted Nastami no more, despite the fact that Rindu had long given up on Nastami even touching the family business. If only Tsubaki knew the truth, then he would have known Nastami wasn't a threat and maybe they could be more brotherly. Ignorance truly is a sin, isn't it? Ignorance is also bliss. Now the last, but the most dear of characters. Aoi is the youngest daughter of the Sakaki family. I created her because I am such a sucker for adorable little girls. I know, I'm sorry, I couldn't help myself. Since she is the youngest character, Aoi is basically the Katie of this game. <laughs> if you don't know who Katie is, she is the ghost from the first game. Just so you know, Katie is a ghost girl who is the youngest character in the first game. <laughs> so that's the main reason why I ensured a little girl would make an appearance in this game no matter the cost, namely because I had the idea of having a child who isn't exposed to the dirtiness of the world. Keep this child pure, for goodness sakes. Don't let her be exposed to the chaos that teenagers and adults go through when it comes to difficulties in life. When you put AoE up against the rest of her family members, she is so innocent and the sweetest thing. Indeed, she is a breath of fresh air amongst the lies, alter creations, and secrecies. Yeah, was abused by her father for some reason of being the youngest family and able to defend herself. I swear, Rindo is such a disgusting person. Correct. Rindo is a abomination of a person, which is why Azusa watches over her. Also, if we take a gander at the ending image that Nui drew of Sogo and Neobi together building the snowman, you can see they are both looking towards someone to the right. Are you curious who we're looking at? Is it someone who was released from prison? Then try to recall the scene in the true ending where Sogo promises to build a snowman together with Aoi and a certain someone. Now, do you remember? Yeah, I do remember even before you pull up this note, and that is, of course, the youngest son of a family. Good. So now let's look at these pictures. Here are those illustrations in the game. Caution! Illustrations marked with an asterisk will contain spoilers for a bad ending. So please view them at your own risk. I've already seen the. Ah. Oh, oh, it's so nice. <laughs> oh. uh, cutting image compilation. The Shrek of the of this illustration drew this in gist. We included this in the game because it would have been a complete waste if we hadn't. <laughs> now enjoy Sojo and all of his fat service glory. <laughs> so that's why it was put in. Azusa's been slapped bad ending. Ah, okay. So that was a slap. And that was also a slap. So good with Nina. Sakura's tears. Azusa and AoE hugging together. Aww. Cancel. What's this one, man? Here are some discarded illustrations that were not used in the final product. Sogo protects Nina. Whoa, there are too many illustrations made for a finale that some had to be discarded. Also, Nina's clothing is different here because this was done before her design was finalized. Yikes. So there's four more wear hairstyles. <laughs> Some concepts that Sogo used in the results screen. The hairstyles were unpopular with our group because they looked like something an evil villain would have. So we ended up discarding them. Aww. <laughs> four more hairstyle. Ah. Wearing a hair omelette adorned with morning glories. In the language of flowers, morning glory means love in vain. Will fulfill promises and affection. Nah. 
Just sort out your sleep pattern, you'll be fine, love. Here are the illustrations using your unique credits. Note, you can change the page by either selecting, yep, yep. Yay. Well, I can't do that with a mouse, unfortunately. <laughs> All of these are pretty. Blabbering about flowers. Gogo's first appearance. Ah, the butler in the background. What the hell's going on? There's secret meeting. Drenched in water. <laughs> that was that scene, man. Nina playing a game of cards. Nah. Next page. Yuki confronts the Harimas. Okay. This was obviously about the um, the time when her beloved was unfortunately murdered. Can you snap so go? <laughs> that was about the laundry. <laughs> Discovering the cherry blossom necklace. Nah. Time for a deduction. Saying farewell to the Sakaki family. Nah. <laughs> oh, little ale is so small. So small and efficient. So yeah, this was the training bit that was mentioned earlier where AoE was waving to someone because obviously somebody had to take that picture, but who could it be? And obviously it was be somebody else. And the family portrait. Kian Shol. What about the last two? The illustrations used for results of your deduction skills displayed at the end of the game. These illustrations may contain spoilers, so please view them at your own risk. Yes. A. B. Well, that's a bit revealing, don't you think? C. And D. And this? Animator scenes you use in the game. You are unable to skip these animations and they must be washed in full. Bloody heck. Bad end spoilers. Which one was this? Ah, oh, that, okay. Ah, it was sort of like the Mirage one. Oh dear. Anyway, that was a nice way to end this video off. But that is... Okay, the baths beyond are non canon scenes which contain comedic elements that may spoil your experience of the game. Do you wish to still wish to answer now before you enter the baths? We just have one more time. One more question we would like to ask you. We would like to know who is your... Favorite character, um, Detective Sago or Assistant Nina Ayamura? Does this matter, or is this like choose if you are male or female? My, my favorite character, cold or just an angel? So you like Assistant Ayamura? Thank you for answering. Now please come and enjoy the bath. Okay, I thought that that was the case, so you choose your favorite character, then obviously it would be like this. But why am I here with all these people? Relax, Mr. Master. It's not every day we can have fun and take a bath together like this. It's been a long time since I had a bath with this many people. Same here, AOE. If you like, I could wash your hair for you later. Yay, I would like that. Uh, why can't mine be just like Miss Sakura and Miss Akini? Is something wrong, Miss Asamoto? Oh, Miss Amayo, it's just sad. Uh, why am I... Okay. <laughs> That's a bot. <laughs> you only lose if you let yourself lose. I see what you mean by that now. Why? <laughs> this is not meant to be within the video. <laughs> Oh, uh, goodness sakes. Yeah, it's very nice to soak in down with some friends. You know, I'm not meant to be here. <laughs> I don't know. Mm, want to ask me? I don't know. Indeed it is. Thanks for playing our game. 
<laughs> now, go ahead. So go. I thought that was the case. Aren't you feeling hot wearing a hoodie to the bath? I just don't want anybody to see my body. That said, it also works well to keep me warm from a certain detective's icy glare. <laughs> oh dear. It appears Master Natsumi, Ma Mr. Mr. Natsumi, Mr. Tosmaki, and Young Master are rather rambunctious. I agree. I must ensure no one makes a mess of things here. Even now, you're still focused on your work? Yes. Oh, Doctor, it's you. My apologies. I must confess I was perplexed when I saw you from behind. <laughs> now, of course. Uh, it's my long hair, isn't it? I don't blame you. It can be rather misleading. Quiet. Yes, I do. <laughs> now it's the last turn. Hey, why have a hoodie, little man? Aren't you sweating that thing? Cut it out. There's a good reason I don't want to see my body. Yep, it is definitely a reason why to cover up. I'm going to have to remember when Azusa's just a kid. <laughs> And they're so just like, what the hell is this conversation going? Where the hell is this conversation going? <laughs> okay, so that is absolutely everything in this game. There are probably a few secrets which I have not been able to deduct in my game, but if you want to, folks, then please check the game out for yourself and see what other secrets you can discover in the game in itself. But this has been the Mystery Files of Detective Inaba number two. This, I like this. I like this a bit more than the first game, where the first game was pretty good in itself. Although it does have the same flaws as the first game, where the puzzles given to you don't have any hints that can actually help you unless you read up a walkthrough. Or if you're just some sort of super genius or somebody who can just work it out from just looking at the tiny clues which are given to you then maybe the game is possible to complete without a walkthrough but unfortunately for me I had to rely on the walkthrough otherwise we would still be stuck at the drawer pin where you had to solve that pinko thing and I wouldn't be able to have a second video up at all or the third video or this one so thank you so much for watching guys and see you all within the third and final out and final game of Inaba Detective Series in number three. Have a good day and take care of yourselves.